The 2020 Democratic presidential race has featured a lot of God talk. See here. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. And here. The foundation of my life was a raising with a faith in God. And here. You know, so much of uh, what, what Christ's teachings are about have to do with, with the way that we take care of the least among us. I'm Guthrie Graves Fitzsimmons, and I've been following this God talk for a while. Religious preaching is typically more associated with conservatives. But in 2020, as Democrats, we have a rare opportunity to reclaim a positive role for faith in politics. The opening? President Trump and his brand of white Christian nationalism. Of course, this isn't really new. I pray for the will of God to be known so that we can know it and to the best of our limited ability, try to follow it and fulfill it. So what's different now? Trump's election has led to a public reemergence of the religious left, a broad and diverse coalition of religious groups active in progressive politics. This political season has already introduced more religion and a more liberal interpretation of the Bible than past elections. Pete Buttigieg, an Episcopalian, Cory Booker, a Baptist, and Julian Castro, a Catholic, have spoken eloquently about how their faith informs their progressive views on issues such as LGBTQ equality. Um, there are several different words in uh, the Greek New Testament that we would translate as love. So sometimes it's brotherly love, sometimes it's uh, uh, romantic love, all, all the, we just have this one word, love. Right. And Elizabeth Warren, a former Sunday school teacher, has developed something of a stump sermon using a passage from the New Testament. So I'm at Matthew 25. You ready? We're gonna do a little Matthew here. Warren focuses on Matthew 25, which for many progressive Christians like me is the heart of the gospel. In it, Jesus says God will judge the nations based on how well we feed the hungry, care for the sick, and welcome the stranger. It mirrors Warren's political platform of universal health care and immigration reform, and it's long been central to her public service. These politicians are not going to win over conservative Christians who believe marriage is between a man and a woman or that abortion should be banned. Those issues unify conservative Republicans in a way that Democrats have never been. And they reflect both the challenge and the opportunity that Democrats face. See, Republican voters are pretty racially and religiously homogeneous. And Democrats, well, we aren't. The black church, as well as religious minorities who face the rising threats of Islamophobia and anti-Semitism, are the driving forces behind a revitalized religious left. This movement is also supported by a sizable number of white Christians, like me, who want nothing to do with that unholy alliance between Trump and white evangelicals. Candidates will need to dedicate staff and campaign resources to prove they're sincerely working on issues that matter to us. This way, Democrats can chip away at the perception that the GOP is the party of G-O-D.